Well, good morning. I wanted to share with you another new book that we got here at the library, The Arabic Quilt, An Immigrant Story. And one of the reasons I'm choosing this is it's new, plus it was a donation um, from the Quilters Guild. So this is kind of a fun thing that got added to our library. Oh, look, I think that gives us an idea of the quilt that is gonna be made. I wonder if any of you guys know how to quilt. I've tried making quilts. Eh, they haven't gotten very far. Kanzi, Hab Habibiti. Oh my, we're gonna get to listen to Christine try to say some words. You're going to be late to the first day of school, Mama calls. I'm coming, Mama. Kanzi stuffs her notebook into her backpack and qu quickly but carefully folds her quilt, the special one Tita made in Egypt. Breakfast is delicious. Egyptian fava beans, homemade French toast, and watermelon with feta cheese and mint. Zachariah has watermelon juice dripping down his chin. He looks happy. I packed your favorite lunch for you, a kofta sandwich, Baba exclaims. Shukra, Baba, Kanzi says, but secretly she wishes her Baba would pack her a peanut butter and jelly sandwich instead. Her family has just moved to this town and she doesn't know anyone. She doesn't want to be different. Do you ever feel like you're different? That's not a good feeling. In the car, Mama sings along with the songs on the Arabic radio channel. When they pull up to the school, Kanzi turns down the radio volume. Mama gives her a confused look. Good luck today, Mama, says Bahibek. I love you too, Kanzi responds. In class, Mrs. Hagen asks all the students to share three facts about themselves. When it's Kanzi's turn, she says bravely, I am Egyptian-American. I love to swim. I love to write poetry. Then she sits looking down at her desk. Let's see what grade she's in. Third grade. At lunchtime, Kanzi is surprised when Mama walks through the door. Habibiti, you forgot your lunchbox. Habibiti, like hobbit? Isn't your name Kanzi? Molly snickers. Ooh, there she is right there. Her classmates laugh with her as they walk to the cafeteria. Mrs. Hoggins sees tears rolling down Kanzi's cheeks. What's wrong? She asks. Molly made fun of what my mama said. Kanzi replies, oh, Kanzi, being bilingual is beautiful, says Mrs. Hoggin. Don't let anyone make you feel ashamed. You are special. That night, as Mama puts leftovers, Sherbet adds in Kanzi's lunchbox. Kanzi gently pats Mama's back. Can you please pack me a turkey sandwich instead? Before bed, Kanzi writes a poem as she hugs her quilt, which smells like Tita's home. Like she wants her food even to help her feel like she's apart and not different. The next day, Molly says, Mrs. Hoggren said I hurt your feelings. I'm sorry I laughed at your mom's language. It sounded funny. It may sound funny to you, but that's only because you don't speak Arabic, Kanzi says. She feels a lump forming in her throat. My parents say that learning different languages makes a person smarter and kinder, she blurts out. Oh, whatever, Molly says, skipping away. Mrs. Hargren calls Kenzie to her office. I found this notebook on the floor and it's open to a lovely poem, she says. I was describing my Tita's quilt. Kanzi says, when I visited her in Egypt, she gave it to me. My Tita only speaks Arabic. Mrs. Hargren smiles. That is special. I would love to see your quilt. Can I bring it to school, Kanzi asks. Sure, bring it tomorrow, Mrs. Hargren says. The next day, oh, she brought her quilt. The next day, Kanzi unfolds her quilt in front of the class. Her heart is pounding. This is my quilt that my Tita in Egypt made, she says. That's cool. I want to make a quilt like that, Deshawn says. Maybe we can all make one for our classroom, Claire shouts. Mrs. Hagen nods and smiles. On Friday, Mrs. Hagen makes an announcement. I have an exciting project for us all to work on. 
Kanzi's mom is here to help us make a quilt of all your names in Arabic. As mama steps forward, Kanzi thinks how beautiful she looks. Shukran for welcoming me here, mama says. Kanzi and I will write down your names in Arabic and you will copy your name on your own quilt piece. Molly is not enthusiastic about the project. Who cares about Arabic? We live in America. My mom says we, we should only speak English. In response, Mrs. Hogren starts writing words on the board. Algebra, coffee, lemon, sugar. Does anyone know what these words have in common, she asks. They come from Arabic words, Kanzi whispers. Mrs. Hogan nods. Learning out their languages besides the one we grow up with helps make the word world a friendlier place. We can speak non-English languages and still be American. I wonder what my name looks like in Arabic, Brianna says. Kanzi and Mama write down everyone's names. Neat! Shukran! Amina exclaims. Everyone copies their Arabic names onto sheets of colored paper. Then they decorate their papers with glitter and jewels and place them on the table for glue to dry. On Monday morning, you will see a beautiful class quilt hanging in the hall, Mrs. Hogren tells them. Kanzi is nervous when the bell rings on Monday morning and the kids file into school. What if the quilt didn't turn out nicely? The quilt hangs on the bulletin board outside Mrs. Hoggins' classroom. The colorful papers with their Arabic names have been cut into different shapes and sizes and all the pieces are stapled together. Kanzi stands in awe reading names in Arabic. Claire... Leah, Molly, Ivy, Jack, Lucas, Brianna, Chang, Deshawn, Sam, Angela, Lily, Emina. Teachers and older students stop to look at the names, trying to figure out whose name is whose. Wow, look at those beautiful letters. They're like drawings, they say. Aren't those beautiful? That was a really cool project, Kanzi. Shukran, Kanzi's classmates tell her. I'm sorry I made fun of you, says Molly. I didn't realize how important a different language is. Can you write my mom's name in Arabic? I want to give it to her as a gift. Okay, Kanzi says. Do you want to go swimming soon? I'd love to, Kanzi nods as Molly hugs her. Leaving class a week later, Kanzi stops to look at the Arabic quilt one last time. Right across from her, she is surprised to see another collage of names in the language she doesn't recognize. Those are my classmates' names in Japanese, Kara says. Our teacher was inspired by your classroom's idea, and she asked me to help write everyone's name in Japanese. Aren't languages a beautiful thing? They can truly unite us. Kanzi smiles in agreement. In her room that night, Kanzi holds Tita's quilt tightly as she writes a poem for her parents. Shukran, Mama and Baba, for always encouraging me to be proud of speaking a different language and speaking it out loud. Languages can unite us together like a quilt, so I will always speak my languages without guilt. I will never be ashamed to speak in this language that is so unique. Bahabek, Mama, Bahabek, Baba. So if you check out this book, you can see some of the Egyptian words that they used and then how you write them in Arabic, as well as about the author, which is always fun. So this story was the author, Aya Khalil, right here, who lives in Ohio. And she this story was inspired by things that happened to her as a child. I love books that remind us that it's okay to be a little bit different and that sometimes it's our differences that make us special and can unite us. So this might be a fun book to check out.